what's shaking it's bacon and bungie has been teasing us for weeks i'm getting sick and tired of it patch 1.1.2 sounds even more amazing as time goes on they keep adding more to the discussion and keep throwing greatness at us and it's so like close but yet far away so i wanted to make a guide recapping everything that we know that's going to be involved in the patch and kind of giving my thoughts on how it's going to play out and what it's going to change and bring to the game of destiny now i will be doing this in the order in which they were discussed so the first up would be audio and main focus of this was to add more optimization when it comes to audio as in the game noises fire team chat music stuff like that so now we're going to be able to elevate the fire team noise level above that of the game's music and we'll be able to change the chat volume from 50 percent to 125 and above percent and the game volume in just adjust in-game dialogue, sound effects, and music as one unit. So it's all gonna be counted as one thing all together. And this ranges from zero to 100 real quick. And chat volume adjust for speakers because with headsets, you can easily just change your volume on the fly. If you're on PlayStation, I know that the, you just hold the PlayStation button and you can just do all that anyways. And we're gonna be able to mute music which is going to be amazing for me because in strikes they're hella boring if you're just doing rock strikes and i tend to play my music in the background just to keep me going and pumped so for me to be able to mute the in-game music is going to help a lot it's not going to have that background nonsense so it's pretty great and also which i'm kind of excited for there's going to be an audio easter egg that they're hinting at and I don't know what it could possibly be. Maybe a throwback from one of their past games, something like that, because what else would we know about? Now, the next change coming to Destiny is visual based. It's colorblind assist. And now Bungie has made it their objective to help out our colorblind friends in transitioning them into seeing everything the way they should be seeing it, making it much easier for them to differentiate, say, shields and loot and know what they're dealing with just like any other guardian and in an fps game it's just a standard to have colorblind assist it just seems right it's just how it should always be so there's going to be a plethora of colorblind aids in the game so they're increasing the contrast between the shields of our enemies so we're going to be able to tell way easier what they are than we already are able to and they're also, as a little bonus, increasing the size and brightness of that little loot triangle that gives us consumables. It's going to be the size of gray engrams, otherwise known as common engrams. Because if you notice on the suffix strike, if you kill suffix, it's kind of hard to find that little triangle. Because it's going to be in his little ruins, so you have to kind of walk around and a couple of times and see if you can get it. But now it's going to be much easier to see, so that's pretty cool. The next part of the update is Vault Space, increased Vault Space. And it's become a firestorm of a discussion. It's started sparking up and just going crazy. And what they're actually doing is we're going to have 24 armor slots in our vault, 36 weapon slots, and 24 general item slots. And they threw some numbers at us. So 21% of players level 30 and above have four or less freeze slots for weapons. And the numbers for armor and general items is slightly less, but very close. Now this is a short term fix because Bungie has decided to focus on exotic weapons storage for this one, because with House of Wolves coming out, there's gonna be a lot of more content to, and weapons and such to be holding onto. So they decided that was the way to go. So if you are someone who has a lot of armor and you're kind of upset about this, don't worry so much because it is short term and they have stated that there's going to be a patch waiting for you guys in the future that will help out with armor and general item saving. Now for the debate side of this, that's only the tip of the iceberg because 
the expansion of the vault could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot bigger even. But the thing was that Bungie didn't want to let go of older generation consoles. So it was held back by PlayStation 3 and 360 content because the hardware limitations of those consoles made it so that the vault could not get even bigger for them. So to just allow themselves to do it, Bungie had to take away the comparison of weapons in the vault for PlayStation 3 and 360 users. This will not happen for PS4 and Xbox One users as we have content that can be used on our hardware. PS3 and 360, not so much. And it's a bummer. And personally, I think that in the future, we should not be held back by said older consoles. There should just be kind of compensation for them, if anything. I don't think that's going to ever be a problem with DLC, though, so don't even worry about that. Now, the next part of this patch means a lot to me and my fellow Guardians. Raid and Strike fixes. Yes, you heard it right. They're going to be fixing the raids again which is really necessary because there's a lot of bugs in the Vault of Glass and Crota's End. It's bad. They're going to be improving final boss encounters. And they talked about a specific bug that I remember all too well. It's where in the Vault of Glass, if you're using the Relic Shield, you can't like hit the Gate Lords. You can't take down the Minotaurs. And it's just ugh, frustrating because it's basically a wipe. And it's not because of you at all. It just is the game. So it makes it a lot harder to get that no deaths during a raid achievement or a trophy. They explain this bug by saying that when you use the relic shield against a minotaur, the hitbox of the minotaur is very long. So with their long legs, it doesn't really calculate every strike very well. And it makes it so that no damage is actually taking place. But they plan to fix this, which I am very happy about, and it will help us all. Then they started talking about two of the, my least favorite strikes, which really interest me. Because both strikes are controlled by the Cabal, my least favorite species of alien in Destiny. And they said that the runtime of Valus the Arc strike was 27 minutes on average on normal difficulty. And with the Nightfall, they saw a huge drop in activity for that strike. And with the Dust Palace strike, it was 23 minutes on average on normal mode, which they weren't really happy about. So it brought a lot of concerns for them. So what they decided to do was decrease Valid to Arc's health by one third. That's huge. That's laughable even because that guy's a jerk. He just comes out and he's immune for the longest ever, yet he's able to shoot you and shoot rockets and such. Whatever. He lost a lot of power, and I'm happy. I don't even care. Next, there's the little guys with shields on the Dust Palace Strike. And their shields are going to be reduced by 15%. Uh, not that bad. I... I I don't really have that much problem with their shields if I use the actual damage type, but hey, it's a plus. You can speed run it even faster now. Huh. And it's about damn time. Destiny is taking affirmative action when it comes to idle players in both the Crucible and in PvE. It's annoying having just people munching off of your hard work and getting good gear. It just doesn't make any sense. So now we're going to be able to report them and that will just translate into Bungie taking a look at the player and seeing if this is all correct and everything make, matches up that they are an idle player and they will get banned from whatever activity they were idle in. And this will continue to grow like the Gorgon's Labyrinth. They're going to get stronger and stronger until you're banned forever from that activity. And that's just how it's going to be. That's how it has to be because it's become such a problem of people just sitting there and doing nothing. Now here's the part of the update that I think is probably the most impactful to me as a player, a crucible player. It's changing special and heavy ammo forever. Now Bungie really wants to make special ammo truly special. So a lot of changes are going to happen. 
Special ammo will spawn less frequently, will take longer to pick up, less crates on the map, and the bricks of special ammo will provide less ammo. Now that's just huge disadvantages to people who like to run and gun with a shotgun, pop a fusion rifle at a corner, or just snipe people off. It's gonna change everything. So you're gonna have to be preserving that ammo a lot more. You're gonna have to be more conscious of how you're spending it and when to spend it. That's the whole point of it. It's gonna kind of change up how situations go. And also they're increasing the drop radius of special ammo. So it's gonna play a lot more like heavy ammo. So if a crate of special ammo comes, you're gonna want your teammates to crowd around it so they can all get a taste of that goodness. And it's gonna become a lot more tactical to steal special ammo from the enemy's side. Say you have flag A and they have flag C. You could flank around to C, steal their special ammo, and then they cannot even use said secondary weapons. And heavy ammo is gonna get a change too. So the timer in which the announcer warns you that heavy ammo is incoming is gonna be increased by five seconds. So you have five extra seconds to get to that point and secure yourself some heavy ammo and kind of change that game up a lot. And also, there's going to be visual timers and prompts on screen that kind of indicate heavy ammo. I think this is going to be really big for me personally because sometimes I like to jam out to my music even in Crucible. So just having that notification that, oh, heavy ammo is coming up on screen is gonna make me run for that point. And I think that's a big change and is a really good change. I don't know about that special ammo stuff. Some of it I really like, but the part about it taking longer to pick it up, come on now, that's that's just unnecessary in my, in my opinion. Next we have item locking, which is pretty big for people with say children or other people playing on their accounts. Because in the past, a lot of people have had their items accidentally destroyed or dismantled unbeknownst to them so with locking items you're going to be able to scroll over to an item that you want to lock and press the right thumbstick in and it'll be locked and then you do the same process to unlock it and when it's locked it cannot be dismantled and i've never actually dismantled something by accident but i've had the fear of doing so and have been very cautious but I'm glad that I don't really have to be that cautious anymore. So it's pretty cool. Help me out in the future, in the long run. Lastly, we're gonna be able to wear helmets in social spaces. Spaces, plural, notice I said that. Because if you don't know, with the House of Wolves, it's suspected that we're gonna be able to go into the reef social space, which sounds pretty cool to me. And being able to wear helmets just further solidifies that kind of role-playing-esque feeling of destiny that's kind of lacking so any improvements on that is good in my eyes and that about wraps it up for this video i hope you found this information useful and if you do i'd greatly appreciate a like a subscribe anything like that all that jazz thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one heavy ammo available